Good evening and welcome once again to Letchworth Cable Access. I'm Kyle Adams Zach, and tonight our guest is Gail and Steve Beardsley. This couple has gone on a number of mission trips, but they're here to tell us about their most recent one, which took place in January of 2021. Where did you go? Tanzania. Tanzania, which is in Africa. Yes. Where on the African continent is it? Um, it's southeastern portion. Down by South Africa? Yep. On the east coast? Yes. What, um, what organization did you go through on uh, this mission trip? This one? Um, Hand of Hope. It's uh, offshoot. It's the mission branch of Joyce Meyer Ministries. What does Hand of Hope do? Um, they provide medical and dental care in um, countries around the world, all over the world, to um, the least of these, the ones that need it the most. Most of them have never seen a doctor or a dentist. In the clients that you take care of on these missions, you mean? Mm -hmm. um, do you have a medical background? I'm a registered nurse. How did you get interested in doing mission trips? You've been doing this a long time, haven't you? Yeah. I start. My first one was in 2009. My first trip with Hand of Hope was in 2011. Um, I was actually home. I had back surgery, and I kind of was on Facebook scrolling, and I happened to see it said, would you like to volunteer on a trip? <laughs> and so I sent a resume in. That's how it started. <laughs> and you were accepted. Yes. Where was your first mission trip? My first one with Hand of Hope was to Ethiopia. My first actual one was to Mozambique. Now, Steve, have you gone along on all these trips? I haven't gone on all of them, but I've done um, six other trips with her. Do you have a medical background? No medical background. I, I go as a volunteer. Yeah. You can put a Band-Aid on yeah, well, <laughs> if they asked me to, I could, but yeah. um, volunteers do other things that the medical people can't handle. Well, what did you do on the Tanzania trip? I was in pharmacy. So um, the clinic is set up, they've, it's very organized. They have a line of people. You come and register the patient. The local people register them. They take their temperature, they weigh them, so they'll know the dosage of drugs. The patient picks if they want to go to a dentist or a doctor, and then they wait their turn and see the provider. Um, then the provider listens to the problem and writes a prescription for what they need. Um, and then um, a guide, like sometimes Steve was a guide, but not on this trip, um, takes them to ministry where they hear the gospel message and drops off their prescriptions at pharmacy and we fill the pharmacy, you know, the prescriptions. How many patients a day on average would you meet? Probably there was 3,100 total divided by five, so. 3,100 over five days. Yes, so six, seven hundred a day. In and out. Yep. Real quick, how many people were staffing this mission? Um, Hand of Hope had 26, but we had in-country volunteers, too. In-country, you mean native population? Yes, Tanzan from people from Tanzania. In pharmacy, we had three other people with us. So there was Jackie, me, um, and Alicia, and three other local people that helped us. Now, you've gone on a number of these mission trips before. Were there familiar faces, people you've gone on trips in other places? There's about four people that I knew already. So it was like a reunion. home week. Yep. <laughs> Steve, what did you do on the trip? On this trip, I worked in the dental uh, department. I had to clean the instruments after they were used, uh, plus usher the patient from a waiting chair into the dental chair. Did you pull teeth? I Help. did not pull teeth, but uh, I had a rubber glove on to first keeping the equipment clean and sterile. So what did the dentist do? Was that 
They um, literally do pull teeth. Most of their job is pulling the teeth, and that's about all they can do in a clinic like this. Um, take a long chair, that's all the patient would sit in, and t tilt your head back, and they just look in there and reach in there, and so most the of the teeth would pull out easy. Patients would sit in a long chair and... Dude, that's it. <laughs> There's no... What you see in our local yeah. is not nothing. No occurred. root canals, canals <laughs> no, none of that. Um, how were the patients? Did they yell or were uh, they stoic? Most of them were kids and some adults, but uh, a lot of them, they handle it really well. I mean, mm -hmm. they, it is numb. They get a, a shot to numb it. But, I mean, a lot of the teeth are so bad and loose that it doesn't take much for them to pull out. Is there time to educate as far as dental hygiene? Um, they talked a little bit about brushing teeth and that, but that's about all the time they have for it. Yeah. Um, you aided in an, an emergency birth. Could you tell us about that? I didn't aid it, but our team did. Um, where we were staying in the village, there's only one doctor for the whole village, and it's huge. And um, after clinic was over Wednesday night, he called back and said he needed a team for an emergency cesarean section birth. Um, and it just so happened that we had somebody that was a neonatal um, provider and um, a surgeon. And two other people went, cause, and she was an emergency room nurse, and then a girl that wanted to be a midwife. So they went back to the village and they said it was the worst scenario you could imagine. It wasn't clean. Um, and they did a real quick emergency cesarean section. The mom was bleeding to death and there was no heartbeat with the baby. So they thought the baby would die. Um, and amazingly, they did neonatal resuscitation and the baby lived. And the surgeon and the do village doctor um, sewed up the um, lady and she survived and they named the baby Hope after Hannah Hope and she's doing well. We have a picture, I have an updated picture of her. Well, that's... <laughs> it was exciting. Yes. Um, you had a memorable orphan child that you... Yeah, I'm not sure what night it was. We came back and um, this, the ministry we partnered with is STEM, and they also have orphanages where we stayed. And um, Eden brought um, one of the girls over. She's disabled, and she was in a wheelchair, and she was just really fun. She was spunky, cute little thing. How old was she? Nine. How many orphans were in the home? I think... Were there four homes? There's 24 in a home, and they take them in, and most of them are either disabled or have AIDS or something like that, yeah. have a chronic condition. And they're cared for by the Hand of Hope? or No, them? no, Hand of Hope just partnered with, we went in and partnered with an in-country mission, which is STEM, so STEM takes care of the orphans. They have a school for them. They do other things, too. Is COVID-19 an issue in Tanzania? At that time it was. Uh, do you want to no, tell him? <laughs> at that time, um, we were met at the airport by the pastor, and his name was John. And on the way to the clinic, he was telling us that um, the government shut down for three days and did prayer against COVID. In June. And, and then um, after the three days, they did three more days of giving thanks and thanksgivings to God, and then uh, there, at that time there was no no cases of COVID at all. And we didn't see any when we were there. Well, that's good. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it was. It's, it's amazing. It's a... So, what is Tanzania like? Is it a stable country? Yes, very stable, very friendly. The people are very very friendly. Is it mostly rural? Where we were, yes. We were um, three days, we were out rural, and then two days we actually went to where the Maasai are, and it's very sandy, hot, 
what I don't know. It was over a hundred degrees. Yeah. <laughs> How did you stand it, being from Western New York? I loved it. <laughs> did you? Uh, I think I'd go crazy if I was in that heat. The only thing, it was windy, so it was like a sandstorm. Yeah. Yeah. Which is easier to deal with, a sandstorm or a snowstorm? Sandstorm. <laughs> If you're just tuning in, our guests tonight are Gail and Steve Beardsley, who you have to give them credit, went on a mission trip, medical mission trip to Tanzania in, on the continent of Africa. Um, you've mentioned some of your other mission trips, your first one, which was to Ecuador, you said? Mi Mozambique. Mozambique. What are some of the other countries you visited? Um... Ethiopia, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Uganda, Ecuador, Nicaragua, Dominican, Panama, Brazil, I don't know, Thailand, <laughs> Thailand yes. <laughs> is each country a different set of circumstances or is it the same needs? The needs are same, but the setting is a little different in each country. Yes. Are the people receptive? Very, yes. Um, how long did it take you to travel from Perry to Tanzania? What was the journey? <laughs> long. <laughs> um, Where well, did you start out from? We flew from Rochester to Detroit. And because of COVID, we had to have a COVID test to board the plane. And um, they had changed the rules during the week of the flight. So we were seven hours. Our test was seven hours too early. You had to do it at the airport? No, we had to do it before we left. Oh. And we had to take the certificate with us and present it. And um, so our certificate wasn't good, so we couldn't board and we had to stay overnight in Detroit. They, Delta put us up in a hotel. We had to go to an urgent care the next day, get another COVID test, and wait for the results, go back to the airport and board the next night. So we so, were delayed 24 hours. So you part. went from Detroit to where? Amsterdam. Then um, we just we had a really short layover in Amsterdam, and it made me mad because they didn't even check for our COVID test results after we did it, but okay. And then from Amsterdam, we flew to Zanzibar, and then we were just on the ground for an hour. Then we flew to Dar es Salaam, so it was real, which is in Tanzania, um, and we had to stay overnight because the airport closed and then left early in the morning on a really small plane to Kilimanjaro Airport. So we got in about 7 a.m. Yep. And what was really amazing was our clinics on a Monday. Our clinics started on Monday, and John, the pastor, met us at the airport, took us back, we changed into our scrubs, and we only missed a half an hour of clinic. So we made it. So you were late, but only by a half hour. You got it. <laughs> Kilimanjaro Airport, is that near Mount Kilimanjaro? It is. Could you see it from where you stayed? Yes, every morning on my patio, I could mm -hmm. see Kilimanjaro. Describe it. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, I don't know. We saw sunrises that were very beautiful in the morning. And there's two mountains, Kilimanjaro and Mount Maru. They're sister mountains. Um, it's tall. It's, it's bluish tinged in the morning. It's very beautiful. So you describe it as beautiful, it's not foreboding or... No, no, <laughs> I didn't think so. No, no I, I just no, wondered. No, it's, it's very, very it's pretty. It's a friendly mountain. It's scenic, yeah. A lot of people climb it. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> no. Um, did you, what did you eat for meals? Did you eat local cuisine or did you ship in hamburgers for McDonald's? <laughs> <laughs> During the day at the clinic, they would furnish us a, a little pe bag lunch. is like peanut butter and jelly sandwich yes. or something like that. And we had veggie chips, right? Yeah, veggie, uh, banana chips. Yeah. They were banana chips fried. And um, 
then at the night time and breakfast, back at the, where we stayed, um, they furnished a meal. Was it local food, local cuisine, or? Um, yeah, Western. I would say so. It was mostly vegetables at vegetables night. Vegetables and a lot of potatoes, it seemed. Yeah. What kinds of vegetables familiar to us or? Ex <laughs> well, they grew their own. They had yeah. their own garden. That they yes. everything came from their own. They were self-supporting. Well, do they have in their garden the same vegetables yep, that we same have? Same thing: those? corn, the, anything they could uh, grow themselves. Yeah. Yeah, tomatoes. Or tomatoes, yeah. yeah. See, stem is actually based in in Iowa. Iowa, U.S. So, so they could have. They can take packages of seeds with them. And, so the guards are maintained by STEM staff. Yes, mm -hmm. and they have the same staff that per, made the meals for us. Yeah. Did you have any native food? Yeah, unusual. I, not really. He made a really good avocado dip. I remember that. Yeah. I, you a, did. You had that drink. They had like, it was like passion fruit or something yeah, with so men or something in it. Yeah, yeah. Now, they, go on. They tried to keep the food so that we wouldn't get sick. Yes. So I think they tried to stay away from them. Nothing too dramatic. They didn't yeah, let you get it. Exactly. <laughs> getting Montezuma's revenge. You got on it. other trips, they, we've had some weird food. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you have, well, well, you just spoke about accommodations. What were they like? <laughs> it was, it was like a college dorm or camp. Um, the women had three rooms and they were mostly bunk beds. Like, um, my room had two bunk beds and a single, so five ladies. And then down the hall, I think there were three bunk beds, three bunk beds, and I think yours had Three, bunk, three beds bunk beds yeah. for the guys, yeah. and then our on our side there was three showers, and then you had three showers on the men's side, yeah. and we had to share the bathroom. So we had this sign: if the guys were in it, it said men, and then you flipped it, and then women. So we had to take turns mm -hmm. for showering. Yep, yep. <laughs> you got it. Were you able to shower each day, or was there water? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Shortage. No, there was no shortage. They said take a three-minute shower, but that wasn't going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, was it? Did you have any free time to see sights or do anything fun? Yeah, um, our flight home actually got canceled because it was all during COVID and stuff. And um, so, while they were trying to rebook our flights. We went to Arusha National Park and went and did a walking safari. That was on Saturday, and on Sunday I went downtown to Arusha to the um, cultural center and looked at Tanzanite. <laughs> What's Tanzanite? Um, it's a gem, purple gem, and it's native only to Tanzania in this area. We actually went by the mine where it's mined. And they use it for jewelry? Yes. Is it exported? Yes, it is. They actually sell to QVC and some of the jewelry, you know, high-end jewelry stores. Now you mentioned a walking safari. What's that? <laughs> well, we got to walk within with the animals. I mean, we were up within 10, 15 feet of giraffes, uh, water buffalo. Uh, there was a guy that carried a rifle that made sure that we were safe. Water buffalo are dangerous, yes, aren't they? they are. Yep. Only the bull. Yeah. But, uh, so you saw giraffes? Giraffes, water buffaloes, uh, what they call uh, uh, red bucks, which is like a... A deer like. Like yeah. a deer. A lot of different animals. Yeah. What about reptiles? Did you encounter? Yeah. When we went to the, riv the lake. We went to the lake and we saw hippos, but uh, I didn't see no crocodiles. So. No. Snakes? Um, didn't see no snakes. No. <laughs> Were there exotic insects? Not that I saw. No. <laughs> um, Not there. Um, one thing we got to observe on the last day of clinic was a, a little ceremony where they uh, cut the throat of a goat and uh, 
they literally drain the blood and drink the blood and smear the blood on their face for some symbol, you know. Oh, they didn't explain what the purpose was? They didn't was. go through all of it, no. That was at the Maasai village. Yeah. So what was the Maasai village like? That's a, that's a big tribe. Yes. Yeah. That's where it was the sandstorm weather and stuff like that. Um, I, grass huts. That's grass was, huts, yeah. sand. Um, the people look different. They're taller and slimmer yeah. compared to the rest of Tanzania. Um, but they're all really friendly. Yeah. On their feet, they wear um, sandals that are made from uh, bicycle tires. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they take the rubber tire and cut it and put a strap on it, and that's their, what they wear. You said they live in grass huts. Were there any modern conveniences? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. For us, they brought a, a empty toilet and set it in the, over the hole and says, there's your goal. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> so they live much in a traditional way. Yes. Did the Maasai come to the clinic? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They actually, when we got there, they sang to us. And it, yeah, welcoming us. She has a picture and a song on it. Yeah. Oh. Is there, are there other tribes that live in Tanzania? Um, or was the Maasai the people? We were with the Maasai, and then the other three days we were, it's um, Mabangi was the um, rural village we were at, and it's just the townspeople up there. So that's all I knew. So the town, now, was there a town, did the town have anything modern in it? Western? It had... I'm trying to that's picture where what the, it's like. Yeah, um, the, that's where the doctor had his office, and there's a marketplace, like an African marketplace, that they sold their goods um, and stores, but they're not stores like around here. It's more like if you've been to Mexico or something like that, kind of like that. Like a farmer's market? Yes, it was definitely a farmer's market. And they just laid blankets on the ground and had their stuff to sell when they did the market. Is there a one day market day or is it through the week? It was two days during that yeah. week. Yeah, because it the market was that one day, yeah. the Wednesday, I know what they had it. Um, what is the main goal of a mission trip to Tanzania or anywhere? Um, the main goal is to present the gospel, so they'll hear the gospel. So that's the first goal, but we give them medical care, dental care. And um, like in pharmacy, we'll give them prescriptions for whatever their problem is. Everybody gets vitamins, everybody gets warm medicine, because obviously their water's not good, so it gets rid of the parasites. Um, so those are the pretty much the goals. Are, they, are, are these groups always looking for volunteers? If somebody's interested, how would they sign up? Sure. Um, you can just Google Hand of Hope Medical Mission Trips. And it'll, you'll go down and you'll see, you, they try to do a trip a month, um, but COVID's kind of prevented that. But, and then you just, um, it'll tell you how to um, apply. You have to fill out an application. You have to have a pastoral reference. And then um, they'll just tell you if you're accepted and you go from there. Is a certain skill set required? No, no. Um, I mean, what about character? Or, I don't know about character is the word I want, but yeah. is there a certain kind of person that would not last on a trip like this? Or a certain kind of person? Yeah, that... actually there are, and sometimes the person has to go. When we went to Zimbabwe, there was a girl, and she actually worked with Steve. And, um, I mean, it's rustic where we go. We have squatty potties to go to the bathroom, you know, and... Um, you have to be careful with the water, so we always have bottled water, and um, she really just couldn't handle it, and she went home early. you got to be ready to rough it. Yep, yeah. very much so. So somebody who's a camper. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, I want to thank you for coming in tonight to tell us about your trip, your medical mission to Tanzania. This was a hand of hope right. mission trip, and it's through what organization? Um, we go with Hand of Hope, and we partnered with STEM. Yeah, but Hand of Hope is... A oh, sub. it's part of Joyce Meyer Ministries. And what are Joyce Meyer Ministries? Um, she's a televangelist. Um, she's based in St. Louis. Um, and her son, David, runs the mission branch, which is Hand of Hope. All right, well, thank you for coming in. Our guests tonight were Gail and Steve Beardsley. I want to thank you for sharing with us some of the things you saw and did on your mission trip to Tanzania. I imagine you have a lot of memories. Yes, <laughs> we do. Well, thank you for sharing what you did with us. I'm Kyle Adamzak. This is Letchworth Cable Access. We thank you, as always, for watching. Good night.